Environmental Sensing in, in the City, Part 5 of 5, based on McCullough 2013, the first half of his book, Ambient Commons. McCullough's next chapter and the last chapter in the, in the first half of the book discusses fixity. And fixity is a kind of generalized idea of permanence, the kind of permanence that we associate with architecture. But we have to look at architecture in a broader sense than the design of buildings. Instead, think of architecture as the design of any irreversible configuration that organizes and confers identity on its inhabitants. It has permanence or fixity. McCullough tells us uh, more about where architecture is not than where architecture is in this diagram. Architecture does not inhabit the upper, upper right uh, quadrant of generalized contexts and sent information. That quadrant is more flexible, less fixed, with any time, any place, media, similar interfaces for all activities, convenience and embrace, overload more likely. All the other three quadrants are more connected to architecture, mise-en-scene, sense-making practices, <clears throat> and restorative environment, all of which we'll discuss briefly. What is distinctive about architecture is that it holds still and lasts long, potentially. Mise-en-scene is a setting that orients the action, originating in drama. For example, consider a courtroom where almost everything is prescribed. Where you sit affects what you may say or what may be said to you. Expectations differ from the witness stand to the public gallery to the jury box. And where things are written creates lasting consequences. In the U.S., the courthouse is the grandest structure in county seats across the country. These served as the main places of political organization and were often the main sign that settlers had come to a part of the U.S. to stay. Again, in the U.S., uh, there is no mistaking a traditional courthouse for a traditional church. You can tell them apart at a glance from a distance. Now, one important question that I have about Dubai is whether there is as much architectural specialization there as I am used to in the U.S., and as McCullough writes about. Can you recognize, for example, your local hotels, gas stations, restaurants, hospitals, and retail stores from a distance at a glance? McCullough's ideas are very much rooted in the U.S. and a few countries of Western Europe, and I wonder how well they match the architectures of other places. Now, this is just an aside by me. This is not part, this isn't something that I got from McCullough's book. Now, uh, getting back to the subject at hand, I'm not just talking about building exteriors, but also of interiors. Consider hotel rooms, offices, the layout of store interiors. Each of these has a generic specialization, and each one has information fixtures. Fire. Inscriptions in specialized places are a matter of placing words. Fire shouted in a crowded theater means one thing. Fire shouted to a squad of soldiers means another thing. To affix a fire label to a plumbing outlet tells firefighters where to hook up a hose. But if I receive a text saying fire on my smartphone, I have no cue about its meaning. Place confers the cues. The message of this sign is not just exit. It says that unlike the era when the building was constructed, a person today may not understand the purpose of the two large glass doors in a darkened wooden paneled hallway leading to a sunlit courtyard. Today we need an explicit message telling us the function of things. They can't just be built into things. This reminds me that I purchased a set of blinds, each of which came with a sign which was thankfully detachable, warning me not to wrap the blind cords around my neck and pull as strangulation may result. Yeah. It is possible for form to inform. You should be able to look around and see places that tell you what they are and tell you what they are for without inscribed signs. And these are all examples. Sense-making uses context for coping with complexity and overload. Carl Weick says, as sense-making unfolds, 
At least seven resources affect not only the initial sense one develops of a situation, but more important, the extent to which people will update that sense. And those seven resources are social context, identity, retrospect, salient cues, ongoing projects, plausibility, and enactment. McCullough's passion for architecture shows through the uh, example of a stone wall as a high-resolution restorative environment. He contrasts this with the low resolution of computer screens as providing a common background for work or other activities. McCullough calls this a topology of the ambient, but I'm actually not sure I agree. Let me explain. As I contemplate visiting Dubai, I look for hashtags on Twitter and I find Dubai to stand for many things, exotic cars, hotels, and concerts. Thus, tagging may not be just for points, but for areas, volumes, images, and symbols, icons of plenty and contemporaneity. Many of the images tagged Dubai are of cosmopolitan splendor, connectedness with familiar music stars, and corporate logos. Nevertheless, I respect this topology coming from an expert on architecture and information technology, and I look forward to exchanging views with you about it next week. The topology uh, elements are points, areas, volumes, networks, environments. The technologies are tagging, displays, entire buildings, urban computing, and ubiquitous computing. And the new condition, conditions include participation, the new epigraphy, beyond cinematic perspective, that is, displays beyond cinematic perspective. Um, conformity is not uniformity in buildings. Uh, infrastructures unbundled in urban computing and uh, ubiquitous computing leading to envir information environmentalism. Finally, uh, McCullough summarizes this chapter, Fixity, the main idea being architecture's cognitive roles, the counter-argument being increased mobility, the key terms being mise-en-scene and sense-making, what has changed being pervasive information technology, the catalyst being out-of-context media, the related field being architecture, which is incidentally um, McCullough's own field. He's a professor of architecture. Uh, and open debate, the value of persistence. That brings us to the end of these five micro lectures on the first half of the book Ambient Commons. I look forward very much to meeting you next week and discussing further. And until then, I remain Mick McQuaid. Thanks for your attention.